What's up, guys? My name is Adrian Rivera, and I make music in my shed. Join me today is somebody else who also makes music in my shed. My brother from another mother, Deacon James Prez, Washington. What's up, bro? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, check this out. Look, they can't see it because the computer's in the way. What the heck is that, Adriel? It's a pumpkin. You you want to hold it? Yeah, I'll hold it. That's the. It's not the first pumpkin from my garden. I. It's the best looking pumpkin from my garden. Ah. Uh, um. Also, it might be the heaviest too. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. No, it's the second heaviest. Um. This pumpkin. Was, I touched your finger. Why? I didn't, yeah, Why I'm did you just <laughs> touch my finger, bro? <laughs> Get uh, your hands off I'm me, just, bro. I'm just trying to show the pumpkin. So this pumpkin. <laughs> this pumpkin um, was grown from a seed that I got from a farm. Uh, I went to this. We went to like the world's biggest corn maze last oh. year. And they had a pumpkin. There was a pumpkin that I got from from that place that was a white pumpkin that was very little it was like mm. one of those little pumpkin gourd things yeah you know that was white you know got the seed from that planted it and we got this orange pumpkin there it is isn't how does that, that happen is yeah right isn't that crazy like just genetics bro uh it got cross like i'm assuming the pumpkin that that that, that the seed came from when it got pollinated it was cross pollinated with some jack o lantern variety or some other orange pumpkin variety and then we got a little orange pumpkin from it with freckles. Like, I don't know if you see that. Yeah. I don't know if that can be seen on the camera, but you probably see I it. I can see it, yeah. Yeah, it's like got like freckling huh. on it. And all of the pumpkins are like that, which is cool. I mean, this pumpkin, typically smaller pumpkins are used for uh, pumpkin pie. Like, you know, ba baking and things like that. Okay. Sugar pumpkins specifically are used for that um, because they are easier to puree this is not a sugar pumpkin it is still a small pumpkin so we'll see if it works out that way because that's the plan like you know gotcha one of these pumpkins is going to turn into pumpkin pie at least the other ones we'll see what we do we can carve it or something but yeah um i love i love pumpkins i mean i think they're cool i wasn't planning on growing them this year but uh next thing you know we're growing them so boom pumpkins are like one of the things that i've kind of mastered i've been growing pumpkins for years because i there's a whole story we're going on such a tangent um i might talk about this pumpkin later we'll just put it back here for now <laughs> but get right back to you. yeah there you go love that love the pumpkin we, we will come back we'll come back to you today what are we doing today this is actually one of those days where i just showed up on the job and just like <laughs> I don't know. we're answering your questions I asked on Instagram for some questions to give you guys because today, or for you guys to give me, because today it's a freebie day. Um, we got a little gap week between the next song and the last episode, so happens. We got a, we got a little gap week answering your questions. Um, so we should just dive into it, yeah. I mean, we should we should dive into it. This is is this like the this is only the second one of these that we've done, yeah. Yeah, this is only the second one. That's this crazy. Is, this is episode thirty, actually. Wow. I don't know when the last one was. It was like episode seventeen or so, mm. I think. I'm not entirely sure, but it seems every fifteen weeks, <laughs> something like that. Every fifteen weeks, we get to you know enjoy a little bonus episode. That don't sound so, too bad to me. I hope you guys enjoy it. Maybe if you like it, we'll do more of them more frequently. We'll see. We'll see how it turns out. This podcast is flexible. Anyway, we're getting into it. Let's let's dive in. So Justin asked, what inspired you to strive to be an artist? And for both of us, right? So for me specifically, I don't know if I've answered a question like this already, but I feel like um, I mentioned a lot. I mentioned, I, I, I will mention it in a future episode. Um based on the timeline <laughs> i've been there bro i've been there, been there. <laughs> um but like my my older brother definitely inspired me um to start pursuing music in 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 a more serious sense rather than just a hobby because he was inspired by a youtuber named christian guzman who started from he's who my brother saw start from like twenty thousand subscribers to becoming 
to have or to have over a million subscribers and not just that but build multi-million dollar businesses from being a college student to yeah then now yeah. and so um my brother is the one who really pushed me to to do something that i love and you know really go for it and so that and john bellion John Bellion, I love his music. I love the passion that he has for music. And if it wasn't for John Bellion's content of like showing his process of making music and seeing the passion he has for making that music, uh, I wouldn't have. I don't think I would have thought of music as fun as I I, I saw him enjoy it. Um, so that's mine. What about yeah. you? The, those John Bellion vi- videos were. There's something else. There's something else. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, watch them whenever you're down, you know? Just go and watch one. Inspires you real quick, for you know? Real, for sure. Um, Can I... What, what was the specific wording on the question? What inspired you to strive to be an artist? Okay. Um, I honestly... Like, I don't really know. Like, I <laughs> I, I, do, I don't know. Like, the, the whole music thing really was not, like, ever... Uh, like a plan or something that I thought I'd do in the future or anything like that. Like it just kind of happened and I just really enjoyed making music. And so I was like, I want to continue to make music. And then how do you continue to make music? Well, you make it your career and then you could do it for the rest of your life. You know? Um, Sounds like a plan to me. Right. And so, uh, but yeah, like I, I was, I was a huge fan of like hip hop music and stuff before I started rapping, you know? Um, and then yeah, I just I just dove in more and more and more with like each consecutive year, and yeah, I, I can't think of like a specific uh, moment or anything or yeah, I just kind of I just really enjoyed it. And I was like, I want to continue to do this. The progression just happened naturally. Yeah, yeah, I think so. It was like when you fall in love with like a video game. It's not like something inspires you to play the game. Yeah, you just you choose it and then you happen to love it. Yeah. Yep. yep. And I just, I'm like, oh, I want to do this tomorrow. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to do this tomorrow. And then you just keep going. Mm-hmm. And now now I'm here, years yeah. and years later. Which, everything, everything, it's crazy. Everybody has a different way of going about it, like a different path. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Next question. But before we go on to the next question, I just want to point out, we're not wearing headphones. We usually wear headphones, but like now our ears are exposed for this episode um we really don't need to listen to anything so we don't have the headphones on so if you're wondering why we have ears that's why that's why they live under the headphones yeah they do exist it's true we have them it's true unless this is cgi i i don't know see just like wolverine's arms exactly exactly just like that anyway (laughs) tabs asked how'd you get seven million plus streams please tell me (laughs) <laughs> please adrian give us give us the secrets bro um it's a comedy it well okay so i was lucky enough to be able to uh i guess here i'll go back consistency one is the one of the biggest things is consistency right and just consistency over extended periods of time i've been doing this for eight years at this point now um and so, and, and I've only been releasing music consistently for almost four. It's almost half of that. Wow. That's crazy. Anyway, um, that in combination with some advertising that I had done, you need to market your music, right? Whether it's through paid ads, through content, um, you need a way to get that music in front of people and you need to be consistent. Those are the two combos of of growing of how i've i've grown to where the point that i'm at right now right um and a bit of luck i mean like everything comes with a bit of luck like the more you put yourself out there the more you will be exposed to luck you yeah know what i'm saying yeah yeah so it's like the more consistent you're doing it the better chances you're giving yourself right um but it's a combination of that Going back to what I was saying, I was lucky enough to run ads at a time where they were very cheap for what uh, for what I was doing, which was just running towards streaming. Yeah. And uh, that helped to really push 
certain songs. A lot of songs got a lot of traction, but specifically so close. Yeah. One of my like my most streamed song with over a million streams got a lot of traction through a two hundred dollar ad campaign. Um and I don't not that I don't because I still run ads every once in a while and there's a little bit more knowledge you need to have for running ads now. Um testing, things like that to really have, you know, good results. Um I still think ads are super viable and I, I, I actually would recommend them, but I think there's uh, a caveat to it where it's like you have to do ads also at a consistent basis to be able to learn them and know how to run them well enough to get profitable campaigns. Yeah. For example, um, two steps behind, I ran a small ad campaign recently for it to give it a little extra boost because it's a song that did well just kind of like organically almost, right? Um, and so knowing that the song was resonating really well with you know certain people, um, I ran ads to it towards Spotify to see if I could boost the streaming numbers to get some more algorithmic, tr- algorithmic traction. And over the span of like a month, yeah, I boosted the numbers a bit through advertising and it seems like it's the ads are turned off now because although, you know, it helped get the boost up, it, like, you know, ads cost money. Right. We were on a budget over here. Yeah. Balling on a budget. <laughs> so, like, I turned them off, but the residual effects are still going on. So, you, I, there's still some good algorithmic push coming from that. Yeah. Um, Song is now in the top five of my Spotify, and I'd bet that it would it'll continue on this trend for a little bit and p- potentially even go further it had its highest streaming day within the last month like two days ago oh that's crazy yeah it had like 800 streams in a single day um wow and that's from algorithmic help you yeah know? but because of like the good data that the ads had brought it and so to, for that was like the combination for me um and i still think it's a good strategy there's still so much more that i have to learn about ads and just marketing in general but not saying that paid ads is the only way to go. There's also just organic content you can create for your songs that have helped build that help, like can help build traction. Connor is a great example. Yeah. Our friend Connor Conrad, he posted a bunch of content for his song "Me and You," which it now has three hundred thousand streams, and I'd bet that that song will go on to make a get a million streams within like you know the few years of its li- like the first few years of its life. Yeah. Um, and so, like content organic content unpaid also works really well that just takes a little more elbow grease yeah you know to pump out content and find the content that works and resonates with an organic audience but um yeah just a consistent outflow of music and you know some way of getting that music in front of people over extended periods of time seven million streams (laughs) at least that's yeah that makes sense yeah so and now I'm at a point too where like it all compounds. So any song that I release now, within the first, I'll give it. I'll I'll be. What's the word? I'll <laughs> I'll uh, I'll give it extra time than these. But like within a year of the song's life, it'll get at least a minimum of ten thousand streams now from doing nothing but just posting it on Spotify. Like yeah. that's where my where like I've the gotten, baseline yeah yeah right you know and that's being generous there you go that's me being generous with the time you know um i have songs like my song in january that i posted one like you no advertising ran to it whatsoever One hundred thirty thousand streams you get sometimes you get songs like that which is yeah. cool um and yeah like again it's just consistent over extended periods of time boom happens at least that's that's the way I think about it. And now, obviously, too, I'm still a growing artist that's learning and stuff. So this is all, like, you know, maybe a, a few years down the line, I'll say something different. But I highly doubt it. I think this is, I think that's like, that's that's the key. Yeah, that's the key. Yeah. How about you? No, I, no, I mean you just did it, dude. <laughs> like you just did it. Thank you. No, yeah, there's nothing like I can't. I can't add anything. Like you, you broke it down. That that is the sauce. That is the sauce for. Real. I think I think making sure to think of it, um, 
when you're spending money on ads for streaming, like understand that you're not going to make that money back from the streams from that ad, but could possibly make it up outside of like streaming in general, but you could also make it up on streaming with the algorithmic stuff Mm -hmm. and the push that that can give you. And that's kind of the goal of ads is like going for the algorithmic push, not the the streams itself from the ad. Right. Um, And again, like you have to, with ads, you have to accept that you're not, everything's going to be profitable and you will lose money, you know, but if you keep doing it, you might get the campaign that will make you the money and more. Yeah. And very, so, very true. So for example, so close when I ran that campaign, $200 big has made me that $200 campaign has made me well over. I mean, I don't know the exact number, but it's well over a thousand, you know, right. from that one song. And had I had, you know, known what I know now, I would have kept that campaign pushing. Like, yeah. You know, that was a beautiful campaign. Um, and so, but hey, you live and you learn. You live yeah. and you learn. Next question. Cooper. Oh, I spit. I'm so sorry. Cooper asked, what kind of vocal chain do you use when it comes to mixing your songs? Let's have you answer this one real quick. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Um, my vocal chain is a combination of like plugins that probably aren't doing as much as I think that they are and presets that I stole from Adriel. <laughs> um <laughs> But I do a an EQ. Hold on. I'm trying to remember the order, but I don't know. I have it like set as a template, so I don't mm-hmm. remember it. But I think it's EQ and then a compressor and then a de-esser and then a delay and then a reverb mm-hmm. is normally like my standard thing. Oh, I use a sound goodizer thing. It's called sound goodizer, oh, which so- is like an EQ compressor combination yeah. type thing. Yeah. People clown. Oh, I don't want to say clown on it, but it's a it's a meme. It's a meme. It's a meme in the music production community for sure. It's a meme, and I put it on my vocals. So, so yeah, that 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 tells you what you need to know about my mixing. You know. Yeah, I will. That's where I'm at. I will, I will say because you you said you put the EQ before the compressor. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it's interchangeable. People like it's not the biggest deal, and people really don't care that, that much. But the way I see it is, I always put the compressor first before the EQ. Because compressor uh, reduces the dynamic range between the peaks of um, your audio, right? So anything that's louder in volume will be reduced depending on where you put the threshold and what you set the ratio to, right? Yeah. So having that in mind, when you do an EQ, what does EQ do? It boosts the volume of certain frequencies. And yeah. So if you're putting an EQ before the compressor, well, then you're just compressing those frequencies back down. Right. And you're kind of, not that you're canceling out the EQ, but you're reducing its effectiveness, I guess. And so I put the compressor first to get it to a leveled, uh, a leveled level, a leveled volume, and then the EQ to boost those frequencies that I want to stick out. Here we go. I might be switching around my vocal chain. <laughs> and again, it's like not the biggest deal in the world, but that's something that's, that's the way I think about it. And I do it that way. Yeah. And so, yeah, very, very similar vocal chain. I don't use a sound good either, though. <laughs> I will say that. <laughs> but um, I also don't have like a set vocal chain, though. It really depends from project to project because every project requires something different. Some vocal chains are very, very simple. Other ones have plugins that I will only use from time to time, like multi band compressors. Don't really use them often, but there's moments where in a certain song, I'm like, I need to use a multi-band compressor for this because it's not working out the other ways. Yeah. You know? Um, and the same thing with EQs. Like, I'll stack multiple EQs on one channel to, like, you know, because one EQ might not just, which won't be enough. You know, I'll get, like, the range that I want, but then I want to really nitpick these certain ranges and I'll stack EQs, you know? Yeah. It really, like, and there's really no set rule to mixing, you know, and mixing vocals and stuff. That's why I say it really depends on the song because every song is different. And so whatever that song requires, I will mix for. Yeah. yeah. And and I think, like, I a lot of times when I'm mixing, like, it's very formulaic. Mm -hmm. And I am not getting extremely creative with the stuff. But I think that that's something that you do really well. Thank you. And, uh... And, and using it as like using it as like another like instrument kind mm-hmm. of thing you know what i mean mm-hmm. um and, and getting creative with it and i also want to add i forgot to mention autotune 
which is oh, the top yeah, one. Yeah, for sure. Which is the top yeah. one. The first thing I always do is pitch correct, for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and just just because you're throwing it in there, the the effects, like, you know, reverb and stuff like that, um, I adjust, I automate that stuff depending on what moments of the songs require it. Like, yeah. we talked about this on Two Steps Behind, um, how when you have that atmospheric part in the verse... I open up the reverb on the vocals just for that specific part and then and then bring it back in when it when it gets down to the more stripped back only acoustic like guitar. Yeah. You know, so like automating effects too will help paint the song more, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so Hey, watch this man's YouTube tutorials. I let got, me let me yeah, tell you. I got a lot of YouTube tutorials out there for real. Um Elijah asked dream collaboration and then he said, I'm guessing John Bellion, for me specifically. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. If there is one artist that I would want to work with, I mean, there's not really anybody that I'm, like, so eager to work with. Uh, I love m- music. I love listening to artists and stuff. But there isn't – they're really – especially, like, growing up, I think as a teenager, you idolize artists a lot more. Yeah, yeah. You know, so back then I really would have been like, oh, I really want to work with John Bellion. No, you know, or this person, this person. But as I've gotten older, it's like, I just want to make money, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yo, realistically, man. <laughs> so, like, my priorities are completely different. But yeah. John Bellion, I definitely, like, you know, respect a lot. Love his music. Respect that guy for sure. And, like, I think if we got into a room together to create something, um, well... I don't know how it would go. We've had sessions before, me and you, where we came together, made some awesome stuff. That's where All My Way came from. But then we also had other sessions where just nothing came of it. Yep. And uh, and it sucks because that happens sometimes. And so I would hope that if I got in a room with John Bellion, we could make something cool. But who knows? Maybe we're just there and it's like, this isn't working. <laughs> this True. Is not maybe working. I'll just don't vibe. Like, it could just happen like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. But John Bellion would be cool. He would be a cool person to work with for sure. What let's let's say for instance, if you if somebody had to do the um the lyrics and the words and everything, and somebody had to do the production, mm-hmm. which one would you want to do? Would you wanna would you wanna make a song on a John mm-hmm. Bellion instrumental, or would you wanna make an instrumental for John Bellion? Oh dang, that's a good question. That's a good question. I think I would rather make an instrumental and have John Bellion write. That's cool. Because because uh I think John Bellion's an amazing producer. Um and I think he's got some really great beats and stuff like that for sure. But I think his songwriting is awesome. I think his melody choices are awesome and I think if I had the instrument and he or in his instrumentation, he had the vocals and like wrote to it. I think that'd be a great combination. It would suit. We would suit each other really well in that aspect. Plus, my producer tag would be under his voice, and I think that's cool. That is cool. Like yeah. that's one thing too. Is like I like I the main reason why I did that producer tag in 2019 was so that eventually one day I would want I want to be able to produce for other artists. Yeah. And I want that tag to be there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you heard. I, I that was that was pretty loud. Glad glad that you heard that, man. It's, I don't know if they heard though. His his stomach made a little funny, a little funny, funny. It's been happening all day. Bro was like lactose intolerant or something. I really am. What about you? Um. It's Drake. It's Drake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'd just love to make a slap. Now, well, I, Drake definitely, well, I don't think he produces his own beats, does he? Correct. So I can't ask you the same question about the whole production vocal thing. Yeah. Um, But would you rather write for Drake or would you rather have Drake write for you? I mean, I'd rather have Drake write for me, but like, I think it'd be so cool. Can you imagine like if I wrote a slap for Drake and then I never told anybody that I wrote it, but like I just knew that I wrote like, imagine if I wrote God's plan or something. 
Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's that could be like a diamond song. And that's the thing. Like to me, that's how I feel. Mm. I would love to write something for an artist that does super well and people don't even know that it's like it's me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because for me, going back to the whole John Bellion thing, when I found out that John Bellion wrote like so many songs for artists, like like holy you know, for Justin Bieber, Ghost for Justin Bieber, anyone by Justin Bieber. Um, there's a lot of Justin Bieber songs, but he also wrote uh, Graveyard from Halsey, uh, Memories from Maroon 5. Yeah. There's, there's, there's this new song from Jimin called, like, Who or something like that, like, from BTS or whatever. Like, I mean, John Billings, like, just writing for everybody. Yeah. Christina Aguilera, uh, Selena Gomez. I think Selena Gomez. I'm pretty sure Selena Gomez. Miley Cyrus. I mean, like, big artists, yeah. you know? He's acquired John Bellion has acquired billions of streams from songwriting for other artists. And like I think that's really cool. And when I found out that like bro was just on this songwriting grind for other artists, I thought that was really cool because yeah. it's like then you listen to those songs and you can hear you hear John Bellion in it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Um specifically the one that I the one song that I really, really hear John Bellion is in is anyone by justin bieber like that song is like so such a john bellion song that is so true i just got chills bro thinking about that yeah yeah like, yeah it's it's such it's him like that's him just with justin bieber's voice yeah you know and like uh i will admit like other songs that i've heard him write for like i don't see him in it as much but that's one song where i really feel like if john bellion sang on it it would just be his song yeah you know but yeah, so yeah. Great song. Great song. I love that song. It really is a good one. Uh Ryan asks, Do you do you use Melodyne on your vocals? I mean, we kind of covered the whole vocal chain thing. Melodyne, for those of you that don't know, is a plugin for I think pitch correcting. I think. I'm not super fam- too familiar with it, so that should give you your answer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is. It, I don't use Melodyne. Uh, I for pitch correction, I use FL Studio's pl- stock plugin, uh, New Tone. That's what it's called. I was trying. I like completely forgot it. Yeah, and I'm a big stock plugin user. I, I think it might surprise some people, but I use a lot of stock plugins for everything. The only thing I don't really use stock plugins for is mainly for things that relate to production. But when it comes to mixing, um. It's mainly stock plugins. You know, I don't really, I don't go out of my way to buy other plugins because the stock plugins have done it for me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um. But yeah, when it comes to production though, I do use Serum. I do use Shaperbox. But those are, and Omnisphere. Omnisphere and Keyscape. Mm-hmm. So it was like four, those are the four main ones that I'm really using often. Yeah. Besides that, not really using much other ones. How about you? Uh, using like third party plugins. Well, do you use Melodyne? No, I no, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so, no, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I knew that, but like, um, third party. Yeah, you use third party. I a couple, um, like my auto my auto tune is. Uh, I have like this um like stereo imaging plugin that I use. Um, my deesser. Mm-hmm. Those are the main ones. Oh, and of like a vocal uh, bender thing uh, to like changing the pitch and stuff mm, like that. Yeah. Um, which is cool. Yeah. Those. Other than that, yeah, stock plugins. Yeah. They do it. They do it. They really do the job, man. My girlfriend asks, how did you manage to find such an awesome, amazing, funny, talented, and smart GF? Wow. What a, what a great question. How did you do that, dude? By being... It, by being an awesome, amazing, funny, talented, and smart guy. That was great. That was perfect, dude. You you nailed that. You nailed that. Great rebuttal, dude. Thank great you. rebuttal. Thank you. Look at you. How about you? I I didn't I didn't do that. I didn't do that. <laughs> oh shoot! The 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 light just died. Sorry, guys. No more lights. I forgot to charge the other one while we were doing this. So. My bad. Also my bad. That that question I just asked you. It's all good, bro. It only made me a little sad. It's all good. <laughs> Out of pocket. Don't gotta worry about it. But my bad. My bad. 
<laughs> Zion asked, live sessions come back when? And I'm assuming like the acoustic studio session that I've done once for Fatigued. I actually did record some other things that were acoustic covers of other songs, but I didn't end up doing anything with those. Why not? Because I was embarrassed of them. I was, that's honestly, just put it simply, I was, I was embarrassed of them. But Dang. studio sessions, I, I, I should do some, some. I should do some. Why not? Um, cause it's just, it's kind of cool to, to do it. I would love to be able to do it like in a non-recorded setting though. Cause like I had my live session where I sang live and stuff, but I had to play everything live as well. And then like just stitch it together to one. Um, like I recorded the guitar once and then I recorded like, like the, uh, drums quote unquote like it was me tapping on the guitar to simulate the drums you know and then like the piano and all that i recorded all those in as their own takes and then just put them all together so it's live but it's not 100 percent live because it's not like a band playing together oh i see what you're saying yeah right yeah I, I had to do everything myself yeah i mean yeah it is what it is right but i what i'm what i'm trying to get at is i would love to do it with an actual like live band like, right not even but like not like just like some sort of little acoustic session with a like at least a few other people to really make it live you know yeah um yeah do that cut it up into some content bro mm-hmm. post the full thing too right i mean even just what you did with connor uh for i need you the acoustic yeah. version yeah like i would love to do something like that maybe i should ask connor yeah Dude, i should ask connor yeah i mean this, like you play an instrument he can play an instrument you got you got two people already. That's facts. That's facts. And you can probably bang on some stuff to make drums, right? Oh, oh <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, how about you? Any any plans to do acoustic versions of songs again anytime soon? Uh, no. Um, I had a ton of fun doing it. It's like one of the highlights of my of uh, the last year of my releases. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the "I Need You" video. Uh, the the acoustic video and the the song is like it was such a cool thing to me because I never would have thought that like that was going to be something that I do that early mm-hmm. and just like of my own accord right. you know it's not like I did it for some sort of platform or anything like I was just like why not do it yeah yep um yeah it was it was a ton of fun it was a ton of fun but I also think like uh I I just have to make another song that sounds good like that mm-hmm. and just feel the the drive to want to hear it like that. Mm-hmm um yeah and yeah i mean it's it's crazy that you even thought to do an acoustic version for the song because i i wouldn't have i don't think i would have even thought to do an acoustic version of it mm. um but it make like it makes a lot of sense and that's actually my girlfriend's favorite song from you is the i need you acoustic version oh yeah i appreciate that so yeah um sarah lee asked what is your favorite music to compose sound wise in parentheses a beat slow etc um my favorite music to compose sound wise um i I mean i i love composing a wide variety of songs um the song that i mean this podcast when it comes out it won't be out yet but it will be out like within the few days that this podcast comes out um that song's upbeat very upbeat while the song before that is a little more slower, yeah. you know? Um, and I really do like slower songs, too. I feel like I love getting into that emotional sound, you know? Yeah. But I also love getting into that energetic, uplifting sound. And it's just like... I love making music. Yes. You know? I love making music. And so, yeah, any music that I make, I love there how about you, you? How about you? Um, I prefer making, uh, like, like bangers and fun stuff, or stuff that you can just like throw on more casually. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I enjoy that stuff. I enjoy just like, just like doing the rap thing and just like doing ego stuff and bragging like i like that like that's fun yeah that's fun and it's it's the type of music that i listen to the most Mm -hmm. like that's what i that's what i listen to the most which is why i make it Mm -hmm. um but yeah 
yeah, that's that's always a ton of fun for me. But I mean, I I also love a challenge, you know. Yeah, like the acoustic. Yeah, yeah, that was, that's that's crazy. It it was cool hearing you do that that the acoustic version. But yeah, I mean, I do I do see like you know from your music and stuff that is more of what you you lean towards and stuff like that. Um, but things like flowers misses that more s- smoother R and B type or like you know, yeah, darker sound. That stuff is cool. I, I I think that's cool. Um, appreciate that, man. But yeah, I mean, I think, and you actually said this on your podcast because I was listening to it. Uh, we're talking about like making music. How uh, you said making an EDM song now would be the time for you to make something like that because it's like not as many eyes are watching, so it's like there is an expectation for you to have a certain sound. Yeah. I think that's also like one of the reasons why I kind of am always all over the place with my sound, like in terms of like how, what I'm composing. Cause it's like, you listen to the song I just, re- I'm, I'm just about to release as opposed to something like, like, like raising the bar or something, you know, it's yeah. like two completely different vibes, but like mixing it up so that there's different, like there's no expectation to what right. the next thing's gonna be, you know. Right, and you're you're raising you're raising up a, a fan base with that, like with that concept. So mm-hmm. like people know, it's just, it's not gonna sound the same, you know, month to month. It may sound similar. There may be a time where it does or it doesn't, but yeah, exactly. Having fun, having fun, right? You got any questions? Um, just like in general. Yeah, yeah, I do have a question. What's your question? Um. What is your what is what is the future of your content look like? My content, I haven't had enough time to think about this. Um, no. my content for the future, I don't necessarily know. I want content that I find genuine. I here actually, I have a list of things that I think make bad content. Okay. And so, if I want to make good content, then I should do the opposite of what I think makes bad content, right? I mean, I think it just makes the most sense, right? Logical reasoning. And so, um, give me one second while I look for, for these notes. While he, while, while he goes and looks for these notes, you know what you should do? You should, you should look on your podcast platform right now and see if there's a star rating option available and if that star rating option is available you should go ahead and give it your honest your honest rating which is probably probably five stars um because because you you enjoy this podcast right otherwise why would you be listening this deep into it you know um yeah agree. so so you should you should rate the podcast and thank we'd you. appreciate it thank you for that that was that was a good time to put that in there so bad content equals good content is what i labeled the these notes and it says, I put, this is a list of qualities that I think would leave me uninterested in the content I'm watching, followed by the inverse that would have me interested, right? So bad acting equals genuine personality, right? If there's bad acting, then the inverse of that would be genuine personality. Boring topics slash no relevance. So the inverse would be topics I enjoy, talking about slash sensational situations. And then no effort obviously inverse of that is high effort dragging on like the inverse of that is to the point the only goal is to sell inverse is that gives something of value and then unrelatable the inverse is that is obviously relatable so my content i would ideally want to be genuine personality topics i enjoy talking about high effort to the point and it gives something of valuable or give something of value and then relatable and so that's the content that I would want to make. Yeah. And I definitely think I, I love this kind of setting of just being a little chill with it, you know? Um, and so if there's any way that I could like, I don't know, just kind of talk to the camera, talk to my audience and that be something that does well, that'd be cool. But we'll see. We'll see how I structure it. But yeah. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. So, before we move on to quote of the week, pumpkin, pumpkin, 
pumpkin. I love pumpkins. I was going to say some more about pumpkins, right? Um, I remember what I was going to say. So, because I said I would save pumpkin talk for later. When it comes to pumpkins, right? The reason why I'm so quote unquote good at growing pumpkins now is because I've spent years growing pumpkins because uh, when I was in eighth grade, I dabbled in pumpkin sculpting, not carving, sculpting. And I carved or I sculpted faces onto pumpkins, right? So instead of doing like the whole, like you carve the pumpkin with a knife and you like, you know, put the hole in it and stuff like that. Yeah. I got uh, like sculpting tools okay. and sculpted faces into the pumpkins rather than, you know, cut. Yeah. And I have pictures of it too. Um, Were you good? I was all right at it. I mean, okay. I wasn't I wasn't amazing, but I thought it was really cool. And I've always been into jack-o'-lanterns and stuff like that, uh, where I was really into jack-o'-lanterns and stuff, because growing up, I never celebrated Halloween, because, you know, my, my family was Jehovah Witnesses and stuff like that. Um, and so we just weren't... I wasn't accustomed to holidays. Yeah. And so jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins, when Halloween came around, I always thought it was just really cool. For some reason, it always intrigued me. Yeah. And so pumpkin sculpting was something that I thought was really cool. But you can only get pop pumpkins in October or around that time, you know, like the fall. And so I was always like, like one, once like Halloween was over, you cannot find pumpkins anymore. They're gone. They but, just disappear. Exactly. But I wanted to still sculpt pumpkins and I'm like, I can't get any pumpkins anywhere. So I right. should grow them myself. And that's what started it. That's what started it really. Wow. Um, And so, yeah, like, I, I when I was a teenager, I tried learning how to. I tried growing pumpkins, failed. Tried again, failed. Um, I think it took about three years for me to actually grow my first actual pumpkin, and like you know that that was ripe and everything that that was ready to go. And by that time, I didn't even care. I didn't even care about pump scrap was sculpting pumpkins, <laughs> sculpting pumpkins at that point anymore. I just wanted to grow a pumpkin, right? Um, and that's how I got good at it because I spent years learning how to grow a pumpkin. And then that is the catalyst of what got me into gardening. And then now I garden and I grow a bunch of stuff. Uh, but pumpkins, I love pumpkins. They hold a special place in my heart. Although I don't think they're worth it. <laughs> they're really not. Real. They're not really to me a, a plant that I think is worth growing because it like pumpkin pie that's it really you know what i'm saying pumpkin seeds yeah pumpkin seeds but i don't even really eat pumpkin seeds like that you know that much i mean they're all right they're good but like it's like i could care less you know yeah pumpkin pie is good too actually my little brother loves pumpkin pumpkin pie um and i like it too it grew on me a little bit more but like i love key lime pie more than pumpkin pie so it's just like still not one of my favorite pies yeah um and even the smell of pumpkin like a cut open pumpkin it's just I like the smell and don't at the same time. It's it's a it's a very strong smell yeah. to me. Um, so pumpkins are definitely not like to me the most worth it thing to grow because they also just get really big to the vines, like just like they get thirty feet long, like they get huge and they're also just they take a lot of watering. So I'm going on a huge tangent, but bottom line is I don't think they're the most worth it thing to grow but they hold a special place in my heart and i don't mind growing them because they make me happy just seeing this and holding it it's like i got a pumpkin and it makes me happy you do you do have yeah. a pumpkin um and i mean i had a different quote for quote of the week but since we're on the topic of it i have a i have a quote for quote of the week that i'll use for this week that's different let's than do what my what i originally was so what time is it It's, it's late. Quote of the week. That was so cute. Look at oh, us. Geez. Oh, we're so cool, dude. I didn't think he was gonna say it, so that's why I said. But you said it. No, and we said it at the same time. Yeah, it was great. Jeez. All right. So the quote I'll say because, like I said, it was at the top of my mind. I'm probably gonna get it wrong to an extent, but like, Epic Gardening. Kevin Espiritu from Epic Gardening. He is a gardener that I watch on YouTube. He owns the Epic Gardening business. And he's a cool guy. I actually, you know, in terms of business and stuff like that, somebody that I do look up to a bit. He's pretty cool. Um, one of the things that he said 
about gardening that really like stuck with me was, and I don't think I mentioned this on the podcast before because I feel like this is something I recently heard, but he said, um, most of the time, the reason why we started gardening isn't the reason why we continue to garden. And it's very true because like I had just told you guys, the reason why I started gardening was because I wanted pumpkins to sculpt you know that's so crazy <laughs> and like but it's not the reason why i continue you know and like i i've fell in love with it for different reasons and yeah i mean this might have been this might have been the reason why i started but right. it is not the reason why i keep why i keep gardening that's and, that's yeah, crazy i do not have any plans to sculpt this pumpkin by the way just letting you guys know this 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 is not a sculpt. I'm not going to sculpt this pumpkin. That's not my plan. <laughs> You're just going to put it on the front porch to look cute or something? Probably. I got three of them. There's another one growing too. Um, oh, yeah. You said pie. Yeah. You said you're going to make a pie. Yeah. Yeah. One, that's one of the things. Yeah, the, but the thing is, like, one of these pumpkins can make you, like, two pies. Oh, okay. You know, so, like, I really only, I, oh, I don't think I'm going to eat more than two pumpkin pies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, but, yeah, three pumpkins. One of them is actually damaged. It wasn't when I picked it off, but something bit at it, and now it's damaged. Oof. So that's gonna be the pump, the pie pumpkin. Um, gotcha. And then the other two, we'll see what happens. We might carve them, just have them for decoration, uh, make more pumpkin pie. We'll, we'll see. Pumpkins. Fun fact about pumpkins, because I, I could keep talking about garden gardening forever. Um, pumpkins are called winter squash, right? And you have summer squashes and winter squashes. The reason why these are called winter squash is not because they're grown in the winter, but because they store well during the winter. Because these will have a shelf life of like nine months just sitting. Pumpkins last mm. a long time. So this will be with me for a minute. Well, there you go. She is cute. Thank you. All right, my, my quote of the week time? Yeah, go ahead. Here's my quote. It is from Lotto on her new song, Georgia Peach. She says, NBA players go Iverson over my sister. They're skipping their practice. And so there's this basketball player named Allen Iverson. Mm -hmm. And he uh, had a famous moment. I don't know if it was like a, a post-game interview or something or some, some sort of like interview or something. And they ended up talking about practice. And he had this, like, just really funny uh, reaction to it and energy towards it. Like, practice. I, I don't need to practice. Like, I'm I'm the guy. Like, that type of vibe. And so, yeah, that that's what the that, that's what the line's referring to. But, yeah, so I heard that and I was like, wow, I understood a sports reference in a rap song. And that rarely happens. Yeah. And so that, that, was, that was cool. I but see. Yeah. Cool. I don't have much to add to that. There we go. NBA. A NBA. <laughs> you know what they say. I, I do. Do you? Not. All right. Because yeah. I don't know either. Yeah. We're both at a loss. Mm. Anyway, if you guys want early access to my latest releases before anybody else, feel free to join my email list down below. I release a song every month on the 25th. And you can listen to those songs early. This has been Tegan James Press Washington, my pumpkin, and me, Adriel Rivera. And we all <laughs> make music in my shed.